So Spider-Man's become a real tech genius these days, right? I mean, we have spider planes, we have spider trains, we have spider automobiles, we got webware, we have all kinds of spider suits, we got spider refrigerators, spider houses. Uh, what else are we gonna come up with? fans welcome back to comic frontline fans you're back with me mike spider slayer getting ready to do that all-important comic book review so you the fans can make a decision on what comic books to buy and yes guys we are talking about the amazing spider-man issue number 27 this is part three of a private war the war between amazing spider-man and norman osborn right yeah this story i must say has been real lackluster kind of a bore and this issue looks like it promises some action in here so do we get that let's find out book is written by dan slot artwork is done by Stuart amanin amanin and uh the artwork is pretty good in this particular issue i love the way silver sable looks in here bobby looks nice um the vehicles look good, even though we have way too many of them. Uh, we don't need all these spider vehicles. It's just kind of annoying, kind of misrepresents what really Spider-Man, I guess, has always been about. And uh, I've never had a problem with Spider-Man always developing his technology, but it made sense when he was in Horizon Labs. Now when he has his own business, it just, it seems overboard. And for him to use it in his crime fighting, it's a, I don't know, I just don't dig it that much. All right, so everything looks good. And there's this one part, and we'll get to it in a little bit, that I was just like, really? We got to go there with this. So let's talk about this issue and what happened. So in this particular issue, uh, we wound up seeing, first things first, is you wind up seeing uh, Norman Osborn, He's getting his bandages taken off because whatever Spider-Man said to him, he's like, what are you afraid to show your true self? You know, you coward. So that obviously hits Norman uh, really bad. So he has the plastic surgeon take off the bandages. And this is something from like Batman, I felt like. And little do we see is we get to see the true identity of Norman Osborn after all these reconstructive surgeries. He's this total mess. But what I felt that what it is, it's that it's this straight out copy from the Joker because he's got this weird smile that looks like it's stuck on him just like the Joker and he's supposed to be this creepy, evil, diabolical villain, right? And it's like all you left now for him to do is put up makeup and then he'll be the, this own version of the Joker. And I just, I don't like it. I liked when... Norman Osborn was the goblin and he had his suit and whatever it is. If you don't want to be the green goblin, why do we need his face to be reconstructed to be like the Joker or to pretend he's like his own goblin self? I just, I don't like that direction of the character uh, whatsoever. So he's teamed up with the Countess uh, and he's used all the peoples in the land to create his weapons of mass destruction. That's basically what's going on. And Spider-Man is going inside the land, which is um, uh, Silver Sable's land, and he's bringing all his high-tech vehicles, and they're gonna have this war. The one thing that we wind up finding out in this issue is that Silver Sable uh, finally gives the information to Spider about how she didn't die. So we find that out in this particular issue as well. Another cool moment in this issue was where you get Bobby who betrays um, Nick Fury and says, you know what, I quit. And she quits S.H.I.E.L.D. So I thought that was a really good moment. So there was a couple good character moments in there, uh, you know, between all the mix between the fighting and the battling and everything else. I thought that was kind of cool. But then, like, even the battle itself, though, was a little, like, overdrawn. It's just like they, you got all the spider, co spider vehicles fighting the 
Norman Osborn vehicles and it was like almost a scene from like Star Wars where they fight the big goblin tanks and they got to take out these big tanks and it was just it was just really insane it was like over the top even for a comic book even for the Spider-Man you know world I just felt like it was just way out there for that and by the time we wind up getting re- you know ready to end this issue we see Norman bring out the the heavy payload where he winds up getting his big missile that's going to turn everyone into little green goblin minions so that's basically the, the end of the issue what did i think about it it's too much it's just it's too over the top it's not what spider-man is it's not he doesn't have this all these vehicles at his mass disposal i just don't like that direction maybe that's just me i've always liked character development but this character development for the for the characters just again it's just way over the top you know when he was in horizon labs that made sense he got to work in a think tank he got to create new suits um you know small scale inventions and i think that was really neat this whole thing with his own business it just takes it way too far because he's got all these vehicles and all this stuff and it's just like it just i don't know and and just his pure reason to just randomly fighting Norman Osborn it's just I I don't know I did and the character himself too is not there I like when Norman Osborn if he wasn't wearing the suit he was just this diabolical man who just um was just evil you know what I'm saying we didn't need to distort his face again you know when he was in dark rain and he was in charge of shield and he called it hammer and all that other stuff that's that's Norman Osborn I don't need this all this I don't need all that. It was just insane. So there you guys have it. I'm disappointed with this one. I'm going to give it a two out of five stars. Just not my taste. I don't know if you guys agree, disagree. Leave me your comments on below on what you thought of Norman Osborn's appearance going forward with this series. And uh, and just the, the book in general, what do you think it is at this point? So again, guys, as always, thank you for watching Comic Frontline. Don't forget to check out ComicFrontline.com. Don't forget to check out our live show each and every Tuesday night, 9.30, around 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you haven't subscribed to Comic Frontline now, go ahead and subscribe today. So again, guys, as always, thank you for watching. This is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. See you soon, guys. Bye. Spider washing machines, spider dishwashers, spider comic book boxes, spider hats, ones that shoot webs out of them. Hey, you never know. We could get there.